Looking for cheap and reliable College 25 Ultimate Team coins? Head on over to MMO EXP and use code Poodle at checkout for 5% off your order. Hey, what's going on, everybody? It's Poodle back with another CFB 25 video. And in today's video, I'm gonna be going over the 10 mistakes that you absolutely need to avoid if you wanna have a successful Dynasty mode run. Now, of course, before we do get into the video, as always, if you're new to the channel, subscribe. We are growing very, very fast. I appreciate each and every one of you that have subbed recently and, of course, have always been subbed. We're on the road to 30k, we're about to hit 25k, I'd greatly appreciate it if anyone here knew would sub, and of course, like the video. I haven't been setting like goals for any videos, but I probably should be doing that. Can we, can we hit 250 on this video? We've been averaging between like 100 and 500, I think 250 is a pretty safe bet. Comment down below if you have any advice to add, I mean, this is an open community forum down in my comments, I've loved that so far in all our videos. Everyone just kind of just commenting down below and letting everyone know tips and advice they have, especially regarding the video, but in general. So if you have any general advice, comment it down below, use the comments like a forum. And of course, if you haven't already, check out my Twitter link down below. A lot of people over here have been converting over there and following me so they can ask me some dynasty type advice. It's a much more intimate place to comment and get some advice on. So reach out to me over there. And I have underdog down below. CFP season is coming up. NFL season is coming up. We're going to have lines ready to go when it does actually, when the season does start. But in the meantime, sign up with code Poodles so you can get your deposit and get your bonuses so you're ready to go once the season kicks off. So let's get into it. So first and foremost, my first tip, my first thing on the list is when you go to recruiting, you want to make sure that you have your strongest recruiting effort week zero, whatever you want to call it, the first week when you open up Dynasty. A lot of people, I've seen this in plenty of my leagues, they don't start really going all in after until after a few weeks and they see the landscape. That is a horrible approach. You need to start right away. You got to make your strongest assumptions, your best educated guess on what you want to do right off rip. First off, you're going to get locked out if you wait too long. Second, you may be behind an in interest or have a lead on interest. Either way, you either want to retain or stay in the race. You want to start right away. You want to go through your list, see who you want to put on your board. You want to offer your scholarships, your scouting. I like to honestly start with anywhere from like 30 to 35 scholarships, give or take in that first week, because of course you'll very quickly realize throughout the few weeks by like the third week, you may be locked out of like five of them. By the, by the fourth week, you'll notice you have no chance of winning another five. By the end of the day, you end up actually cutting it down to somewhere close to like 15, 25. And then you can also get some stragglers later on. But my point is your key players, you want to get on early because you're not going to get all of them anyway. So make sure you are making your strongest recruiting effort, your scouting effort in that first initial week of Dynasty. Waiting is pretty much a death sentence on your recruiting class. The next thing is over scouting. I've seen a lot of people do this too. They get so hung up on scouting these players that they accidentally spend too many points and actually hurt their recruiting class. So put it like this way, right? This team being like a four star and a half, team has 1250 hours. Of course, there's five star teams. And then there's a one star team that may only have like 300, 400. Your hours are very limited. Even as a five star team, like this may seem like a lot, but you could very quickly go through it. So I can only imagine like a one star team literally cannot waste us. So remember, this is variable advice depending on what size program you are. And if you're a smaller program, even more so be so careful when scouting very quickly, you can go through all of your hours just by one position group. Let's say there's like five or six quarterbacks you're thinking if you scout all of them and you don't have any packages, that's 30 times five, that's 150 hours and QBs and you may scout all five QBs and be like eh these weren't actually that great uh, I'm not gonna go after QBs there's still 30 other positions and players and 100 other players total you're gonna want to still scout so be very vigilant what I like to recommend first and foremost is like I always say calculate your hours I'm not gonna get into that too much because I've been through it a hundred times calculate how many hours you need in that first week to do all your scholarships at bare minimum but when scouting, utilize a few different things. If it's a position that you really just want some depth in, like a running back spot, and you're not looking for like a crazy five-star good depth, you could just hit it one time and take a look, right? Like DT, okay, he, has, he probably has some solid finesse move. His speed's pretty good. Road dog is platinum. That might be enough, especially as a small school. You, As a smaller school, like a one to three-star, you probably are just going after any player that's a high star that wants to be at your school because you're trying to just build up the program. As a higher tier school with more hours, you can scout, but even with some things, like if I'm looking just for depth or backups, I'm not going too crazy on the scouting. I'm really just trying to find guys that I can see very quickly, like, okay, right off rip, you saw his 90 speed, you saw he had three abilities, that may be enough for depth. If it's a key, key position, like one of your five stars that you really, really want, I'd probably recommend scouting them just so you can have an idea if they're bust, they're red gem, green gem, of course, but take that as you will, just be so careful when scouting, it is so easy to get carried away. And then you look back up and you're like, oh my, I wasted all my hours, I can't even offer scholarships week one. The next tip is customizing schedules. I feel like that's something that isn't talked about enough. Customizing schedules plays such a large role in your dynasty experience for a few reasons. First off, if you're a really bad team, and you don't want any good people on your schedule, you can go through and make sure any of your out of conference aren't crazy hard. 
Furthermore, if you're a really good team and you want a tougher schedule and you don't want to be playing any bad teams, you can also customize some of your other ones like Arkansas State. You can go in there and change it up to put a, to put a better opponent on there. You can go through, see what's available, you know, throw Clemson on there. You can make it tougher. And now where this plays into strategy, right? There's a big strategy here. When doing visits, you can only schedule visits at home. So there's been a few instances, right, where I might start the season like three away, let's just say. So now my first visit can't be to week four. So now I have to wait to week four for a visit. And there's some recruits that may have signed or be close to being signed by week four. And same and same concept as my first three games might be home, right? Let's just say they may be home, but my next ones are then away. So now I can't schedule a visit, let's say between four and six. In this instance, I do have homes in four and five, but you'll see with some teams, you may be home the first three games and then be away the next three games with a bye. So now your first good chance at a visit might not be till week like eight or nine, at which point the majority of good recruits that have been heavily recruited are probably gone. So you want to be making sure that you do set yourself up in a nice way where you have a nice even mix of away and home games, especially early in the season, because you don't want to be wasting your visits for later season visits that may never accrue. Also, putting better teams on your schedule will get you more national televised games, will get you better better visits for better recruiting uh, bonuses. So keep that in mind as well. If you're a lower team and you want to get good visit interest, you may want to schedule yourself against a higher tier team. That way, when you do your visits those weeks, you can get that as well as the national television bonuses for your team prestige. The next tip is constantly coming over to my school each week and seeing what you can improve. Obviously with Michigan, there's not much to improve here. Although there are some A's across the board here, but that's really it. There's not much you can really do. Michigan is a pretty great program, well-rounded. But as a lower tier program, you want to be coming here each week first. You can always check to see any players at risk of transfer. That's important. But more importantly, you do want to be going through to see what you can improve. You may see your championship contender dropping, which is going to hurt you. You want to be checking your deal breakers. You may have a player that has a deal breaker of an A championship contender and you were losing a few games and you're, you're dropping to a B plus and you want to make sure you get that up. But making sure you track this each week will give you a good idea. Okay, make sure you want players drafted. Okay, national TV games played. Make sure you're scheduling big games, games of the week played, playoff games, national championship games played. Just be monitoring this. You can make sure with every asset of what you like, every facet of what you're doing, you're making sure to appeal to these motivations to make sure you're keeping them up because keeping these up are the key to good recruiting classes and to improving your team prestige. The next thing you wanna be doing is actively monitoring the recruiting trail. Obviously in this, I'm not recruiting players. I'm not going through that to waste any of your time. So you're not gonna be seeing me actually actively recruiting, but I did wanna go through the recruiting interest levels. You wanna be actively monitoring these interest levels each week, as well as seeing offers, visits scheduled and hours spent. So let's say, for instance, right now against Georgia, I'm putting in an offer and I'm putting in 50 hours, right? So we go in, we offer the scholarship, we offer 50 hours. After a few weeks, if you see Georgia completely take away with the lead and there's really no chance of coming back, make sure that you're going in each week and just checking on that. Once you see the point of no return where you're just wasting hours, you want to make sure to take them off. And more importantly, you also want to be checking offers and visits. You may come to a player where you only see, let's say, let's say you're Wisconsin in this instance. You may only be the, you may be the only person with an offer. So maybe you don't have to go all out because no one else is fighting you. You're very going to easily make it into the top top three and no one's fighting you. So instead of putting 60 there, maybe you bring it down to 40. Maybe you just do the hard sell once you can. You don't put the extra 60 that you can allocate as you see. So it's really important that you are checking this weekly because nothing's worse than just blindly throwing 50 to 60 at each player and just leaving it there every week because you're going to be wasting points. You want to be going through and checking visits as well. So for instance, let's say in this instance, you're Georgia, right? You have a, you have a steady lead. You're feeling good. You want to be checking because you may see Ohio State and Alabama toss a visit on for a big week coming up. Now, in that case, you wanna make sure you get your visit in because their visit will be enough to skyrocket. I've seen this plenty of times where I've had a steady lead and one good visit with some good complimentary bonuses and potentially a big win over a good opponent. You could see from you can see Michigan or Alabama in this instance going from four, three with a pretty large margin to suddenly being ahead of Georgia with quickness, right? So make sure you are monitoring what other people are doing. If no one else is putting visits on, and you are half a steady lead, you don't really have to panic and waste your 40 points in a visit. But if other people start to put visits on, you're going to want to match the visit. To add to that point, the next thing you want to be doing is being so strategic with your visits. I've mentioned this in a couple other videos, but if you haven't heard it, I'll go through it again. I've seen in plenty of leagues, right? See FSU at the bottom there. They they haven't even they haven't even offered yet. They're behind. By middle through the season, they may throw a visit on for week 10 while Ohio State has doubled their lead. You do not want to be wasting visits like that. First off, if you have a large, large margin, like you're so far behind, it is so obvious that you're about to be kicked out of the top five, top eight. 
do not toss a visit on for halfway down the season. Either toss it on for the most immediate week possible to see if you can stay in the race if you do want to, or give up because that's a waste of 40 points. That is 40 points as a hard sell that you could be placing on a player or close to a send the house that you could be to recruit a new type of four star, three star, five star. So do not be wasting your visits. Second off, in general, when doing one in the recruiting trail, do not place visits for like week 10 and on in week zero. Because in week zero, if you're heavily recruiting a guy that early, they're probably committing well before week 10, week nine, and so on. So make sure you are placing your visits at an appropriate time that actually can be impactful. And to go on the point from before, if you have a steady, like a steady lead, you're constantly growing, no one's even fighting you, there's no other offers, why are you gonna waste 40 points on a visit? It's clearly not needed. Now, if it's a five star and it's a player that you absolutely need that you just think is gonna be super elite, you, it's never a bad thing to go all in on that guy, but don't actively use that methodology for everyone. Not everyone needs a max allocation and visits. The next thing is coaching packages. Make sure that you're not just spending them the second you get them on everything that looks good to you. Because keep in mind, and I feel like a lot of people, especially early on when this game came out, didn't really process how many points you'd actually get. First off, you cap at level 50. So as coach Greg Malone, Michigan coach, I'm only going to level up about 20 more times and I'm only going to get close to about, it's 10 points per. So I'm only going to get close to about 200 approximate points left, which means I only have 200 points to spend. So let's say I go into recruiter and I'm like, oh, I want to make this guy a recruiter. All, this, all of these cost 20 total, 20, 40, 60, 80, 100, 120, 140, 160, 180, 200. So let's say I want to max out recruiter early on as soon as I get my points. By the time I'm level 50, I won't even finish this whole recruiting tree. And I literally can't buy anything else for the remainder of my dynasty. I am now locked at level 50. So what I like to do is first calculate what you have left, which is 200, and then make a spreadsheet or make a list and go through like, okay, I absolutely want delay Sunday, right? I need this. So subtract 18 from that 200. That's what you have to spend. I absolutely need dream school, right? Then you want to go through program builder. Same thing. You may not ever get to these points, but it's good to save them because nothing's worse than maxing out things that you really didn't need. And then when you get up to CEO and program builder, you unlock it. Now you have no points to spend and it's just a waste. And now you can't access any of them. So make sure you're saving for these two in case you do want anything. I definitely recommend pre emphasizing and going through seeing what you need, but more importantly, don't just say, oh, tactician. Oh, I would love a boost to throw under pressure. Not realizing that that's one less package you could have bought when maybe you really needed a combo with master motivator so you could actually build up your players once you recruit them. So just make sure you are allocating properly. You're not quickly just spending them like, you know, earn and burn. You're not just quickly getting them and spending them. Make sure you're doing a little thinking behind the scenes on this. Next, make sure you're constantly throughout the season, just checking your players at risk tab. And if so, if you see anyone there going through and seeing what archetype the player is and seeing what you need to do to improve it. For instance, like I've referenced in plenty of videos, Emery Jones on LSU, their right tackle, always wants to leave. That's like his thing. He just wants to leave. Turns out he's a power, he's a power tackle, run game type tackle. I need to be running a lot. And rushing yards per game, although it says like that's what you need, it honestly came down to like a lot of attempts. Cause even when I was having like a hundred yard games, with only like six rushes, he was still asking to leave. Becoming a team that rushed between 15, like 20, 15 and 22 times did a great deal on saving him from leaving. So just keep in mind, you do want to be monitoring that because that's LSU, for instance, how this can affect you. Will Campbell goes to the draft. Harold Perkins usually goes to the draft. That leaves my last great player as Emory Jones, and he always transfers. That means that both my bookend tackles are gone when you don't need to do that. So make sure you're always just monitoring this because you can save them. You can fix it if you catch it early on. But if it's like week 14, it's near the end of the season, close to playoffs, it's pretty much a done deal that they're going to have a high transfer bar and yeah you could try to sway them but it's really not always that successful without packages and without some luck right so just always be monitoring that the worst thing you could do is lose some top tier player you have for no reason when you could obviously fix it the next thing i recommend is getting out the pen and paper your iphone android notepad and going through your roster at the beginning of each season to see what the future of your team's looking like so for instance if we go to quarterback here we have two seniors a junior a junior and a freshman so as you can see here our quarterback situation is not great the starter, Alex Orgy right here, is a 79 overall. He's a junior redshirt. He at most has two seasons left, and he's not even that great. He's only a 78 overall. So keep in mind that you definitely want to bring in quarterback recruits starting now. Because with recruiting, it's not like Madden where you draft a player and then you can start building them right away. In CFB, you may recruit in 2024, and those players aren't making an impact of 2026, 2027. Because the first year may be a redshirt. The next year is going to be their redshirt freshman season where they're probably just still getting built. And they're not going to be overall worth starting potentially until their sophomore redshirt season, right? So keep that in mind when you do this, because you may say now, okay, I have a uh, Alex for at least another season, probably two. I'll recruit a quarterback in two seasons. The problem with that thought process 
is that come two seasons from now when you recruit some guy first off you have to get lucky and hope that there's actually good recruits at quarterback a b that the good recruits want to have, have any interest in your school and c you still have to win that recruiting race even if they do have interest in you so there's so many variables make sure that you're constantly looking ahead so for instance halfback we have a freshman here we have two sophomores and dylan edwards donovan edwards sorry is our senior so right off rip we know we need to work on halfback so make sure you're just going through only two freshmen and then a third freshman red shirt here you're gonna need some wide receivers so on and so forth start early start like two seasons ahead of every position now in two seasons when you have that quarterback halfback wide receiver full of freshmen you can then divert to other positions that you haven't paid too much attention to and that's kind of how you want to just keep rotating it because otherwise you can get to a situation where three years out you are barren across the board and as a top tier program you can't risk that because one bad season will drop your stars one of my last tips but a pretty simple one is go to league settings and if you scroll down to the bottom there is an auto recruiting feature off on right there's two options if you turn this on the cpu will fully manage your recruiting board now you may be saying this is dumb but there is a purpose to this if you go if you're in an online league i'm gonna go through online and off league if you're in an online league and you go away on vacation or you're gonna be out for the weekend or they're advancing pretty quickly and you're super busy at work and you can't be checking turn on auto recruiting first and foremost like i said it's so important to recruit early in the season because you're gonna miss out on basically everyone and then later in the season it may be hard to get any last minute recruits this gives your this allows your cpu to handle it because honestly i know you may not want you may not think the cpu is doing the right thing but 10 15 cpu recruits is so much better than no recruits because if you turn this off you literally will get not, your team won't do a thing unless you have preset in recruits already and you set up the board you can always set up your board beforehand and hope it just goes through but auto recruiting if you're going away on vacation for like seven days you're gonna have no wi-fi you can't remote play in make sure you turn this on and in an offline league if you're going to be simming through a few years you could sim through two seasons and if you don't turn this on you're not going to do anything so make sure your auto recruiting is on if you're just constantly simming through seasons now if you are going in after each simmed week and doing your board that's fine but if you're not you're going to completely ruin your dynasty so make sure you are taking care of that as well but that's about it those are the 10 things you need to avoid in your dynasty to make sure you have a successful run and don't ruin your dynasty if this video helped you out at all first and foremost can we hit that 250 like goal give this video a big thumbs up before you head on out of here comment down below any advice any tips any other things to avoid that you may have let us know down below in the comment section it helps out everyone else that can read through these comments we've had a public forum going on there for days now it's been really great for everyone and if this video helped you out at all like i said make sure to subscribe let's hit 30k let's keep growing but yeah that's about it check me out on twitter underdog as well thank you so much for watching i'm out peace